So I love tricky questions, most of the time, and I saw this question from the 2023 A-level math exam. So let's see how the A-level math exam asks us about a trick equation. Notice that this question has three parts. Have a look. First, we have 4 tangent x is equal to 5 cosine x. We are going to turn this into the given form, right? Just an equation in terms of sine. So let's just do the usual business. Keep the 4, but change the tangent to sine x over cosine x. And then keep the 5 cosine x. And now, we have this equation with this little denominator. Let's just multiply everybody by that denominator. So that when we do this, times this, the cosine x will cancel, so we will have 4 sine x. Continue, multiply this and that, we will have 5 cosine squared x. Now, we want this equation to be in terms of sine x only, right? So the left hand side, I'm just going to keep it. But for the right hand side, keep the 5, and for the cosine squared x, well, we will have to know our identities. Yes. The one that we are going to use is 1 minus sine squared x, the Pythagorean identity, perhaps the most common identity that you really, really have to know because it's so, so, so common. It's like you use it pretty much all the time. Now, we can just distribute the 5. So that's 5 minus 5 sine squared x. And I'm going to put these two terms to the other side. So put this to the other side, we get positive 5 sine squared x. And then this is positive 4 sine x already. And then bring that over, so we have the minus 5, that's equal to 0. And that's it. That's all you have to do for part A. Okay, continue with part B, which is how to solve this equation on the interval 0 to 360 degrees. Notice this equation is a quadratic equation, but in terms of sine x. It's not factorable, but it's okay, we can use the quadratic formula. Write down sine x, that's equal to negative b, so we have negative 4 to begin with, plus or minus square root, b squared, minus 4ac, a is 5, c is negative 5, and then over 2 times a, which is 2 times 5. Now let's just continue this. This right here is negative 4, and then plus or minus. Hmm, for the inside, let's see. That is going to give us 16, and then minus, and then we have 4 times 5 is 20, times 5 is 100, but minus minus becomes a plus, so that's plus 100 here. So we are looking at square root of 116. And then that's over 2 times 5, which is 10. Moreover, we can simplify this a little bit because I noticed that the last two digits, 16, is, uh, is a multiple of 4. So we can use 4. Hmm. 4 times 29 give us 116, so we can have this breakdown. So that means we have negative 4 plus or minus, write this square root as 2, and then square root of 29, over 10. Okay, now we have 4, 2, and 10. We can reduce this a little bit. I'm going to factor out 2 first, so that's negative 2 plus or minus square root of 29. Reduce this. So. We just have negative 2 plus or minus square root of 29 over 5. Now, which one's the answer though? Well, they're not the answers yet. Because this right here is not x, this is sine x. So we have to be careful. The range of sine x, meaning the output of sine x, has to be in between of negative 1 and positive 1, including negative 1 and positive 1. So, if you just punch this onto your calculator, which is allowed on your test, I will just have to make a little note right here. If you have the positive version, that's negative 2 plus square root of 29 over 5, work this out on your calculator, you will get approximately 0 0.677, which is okay for the sine value. 
But if you have negative 2 minus square root of 29 over 5, this right here is approximately negative 1.477. And this is outside of the range of our sine x function. So we are going to reject the negative. So we will only say sine x is equal to this right here. All right, now we have to solve for x, and to do so, we will just use the inverse sine function because this is not going to give us a nice number. Therefore, x is equal to inverse sine, and uh, you can put this onto your calculator. That way, the answer will be more accurate, but if you enter this right here, it should be also good enough. And then if you just enter this on your calculator, and make sure your calculator is in the degree mode, all right? Then I'll tell you x it's approximately, okay, we have 42.6 degrees. Uh, so this is the answer from the official answer key. So I'm just going to keep it like this as well, all right? But you have to remember, if you use the inverse sine function, you only get one answer, right? However, on this interval, we have two answers, and this is the reason why. So here's the deal. So we have 42.6 degrees, so that's say somewhere right here, right? So, and remember, sine is the y value, right? So something come out y like this. But if you go to the other side, guess what? They will have the same y value on the unit circle, right? So now, because this right here is 42.6 degrees already, when you go to the other side, this is also 42.6 degrees. So I will indicate that right here. But in order to get to this position, we will have to measure it from the positive x-axis, rotate all the way to here. Now, if we go all the way to the x-axis, it will be 180 degrees. This much is already 42.6 degrees. So we'll just have to do 180 minus 42.6 degrees in order to get this angle. Therefore, the other answer I'll just put a little comma. We will do 180 degrees minus that, which is going to give us 137.4 degrees. So this is our first answer, and that will be the second answer. Okay, for part C, notice that we have this three that's extra, right? And we just have to find out how many solutions does this equation have on the interval between 0 and 1,800 degrees. Well, this is all we have to do. We have already solved this equation without the 3. And we know that there are two solutions. So I will just say this has two solutions. And then I will just say on the interval 0 and 360 degrees. Now, if I multiply the 3 directly to the x, you shorten the period, it's like this thing will happen 3 times as often as the original. So we just have to multiply the 2 by 3. So 4 tangent of 3x equals 5 cosine of 3x. This equation will have 2 times 3, which is 6 solutions on the same interval right here, 0 and 360 degrees. But we are not looking at from 0 to 360 degrees, right? This is 1,800 degrees. Well, this and that, what's the connection? This is 5 times more than that, right? Well, it's 5 times as much as this. This is 5 times that. So all we have to do is multiply the 6 by 5. That's all. So finally, I'll just say 4 tangent of 3x equals 5 cosine of 3x. This right here has 6 times 5, which is 30 solutions on the interval 0 and 1,800 degrees. And again, because this right here is 360 degrees times 5. So the answer to this is right here is 30 students. That's it.
So what do you guys think about this question? In my opinion, I really like this question because it sets up in a way that it's like you're investigating throughout the process. It's like a little journey, which is pretty cool. And it also tests you a lot of small things and big things. Such as, do you remember to see the connection? Multiply three, you get like three times as many solutions as the original. And then when you use the inverse sign function, even though the calculator only gives you one answer, but you remember to find the other one by using what we did earlier. And do you remember to pay attention to the range of the sign function? And I also like it that when we turn this into a quadratic equation, it was not factorable. You really have to use the quadratic formula to solve. So a lot of things I like about this question. Let me know what you think though. That's it.